Hey, how's it going guys? I thought I'd make an updated deceit guide for new and returning players since the game has gone through some major updates over the years, and there isn't a recent guide that explains some of the new changes. So with that being said, let's jump into the starting mechanics. So the core gameplay is pretty simple. You spawn in as either one of the four innocent characters or as one of the two infected terrors. In each game, you'll spawn in a random location and collect items before the timer goes out. When it does, the map goes dark, all identities are hidden, and the infected players can transform to try to kill the innocents. Collect and plug in enough fuses to start a new countdown for the doors to the next stage to be unlocked. The innocents win by escaping from the hatch at the end of the third stage, or by voting to unlock a hatch on any of the stages during the day. The infected win by either killing or voting out all the innocent players. Now let's jump into the innocent gameplay. Spawning as the innocent, you need to narrow down who might be infected. Look out for infected players by listening for noises of blood bags being drunk by the infected or by scanning poles to see when a blood bag was last drunk. Collect items during the day across the map to expel terrors at night. Obtaining items works a bit differently now. Most items can be obtained through one of three ways. Shooting targets, pulling levers, or hacking terminals. The only exception now is the inspector kit, which needs two players, one to stand on the pedal and one other person to obtain it. The antidote is only available on the first stage and is used to revive an executed player. And the lethal injection is only available in the last stage and can be used to kill anyone. Use light items throughout the night to slow down and hurt infected players in their terror form. However, they'll be able to quickly respawn and have the option to vent back near to where you killed them. The music will get more intense the closer a terror is to you, so use sound cues to know when to hide and when you're in the clear to plant fuses. Additionally, pay attention to the top of your HUD to see if a skull is present. If a skull is visible, that means the next time a terror attacks you, you'll be executed and either die or have to wait for someone to antidote you. To vote out potential infected characters, you'll need to shoot and vote out players during the day. Shooting or knifing them down starts a timer for other players to vote them out. Each vote adds additional time until they respawn. Voting out someone requires 4 people when 6 players are alive, 3 players once there are 5 players left, and 2 players when 4 or less people are alive. In addition to escaping through the hatch on the third stage, players can choose to vote during the day to escape early. This requires all players still alive to vote, and if an infected player is still alive, they automatically win the game. Moving on to playing as the infected character, you'll either get randomly picked by the game, and you can choose your partner or you'll get picked by someone else in the lobby. From here, you'll be able to pick your terror form, some of which are locked by DLC and each of which has their own power to help them chase down the innocent players. As the infected, trick innocent players into voting each other out or drink enough blood bags during the day to reach and rage level at night. All players will see a skull at the top of their HUD if you're at the threshold to execute someone, at which point they can only be saved by an antidote. A blood bag fills up a third of your total meter, and downing players throughout the night will refill one bar. If your partner gets voted out, you receive a full charge of enraged execution. You lose health to gun and light items, as well as being slowed when hit by light. Additionally, infected players can now vent if they're near one or when they get down, with an indicator on their map for where you were last killed. Infected players can also transform back into their human form to become immune to light and weapons, as well as stopping innocent players from being able to hear the sound cue and the music. Lastly, if anyone alive including the infected is holding the antidote, any executed players will have a 20 second timer for both the infected player and antidote holder to see, in which time they'll be able to revive the player if they get close. It's in your best interest as the infected to guard the body if neither of you hold the antidote, as now everyone will be able to confirm at least one person who is innocent for the next stage. A newer feature to the game ret for returning players might not recognize is the labyrinth. Players earn tickets at the end of each game, which can be used to progress through floors in the labyrinth that, that contain item and character perks. These perks can be equipped in the loadout screen or before you load into the map. Three character perks and three item perks can be equipped at any given time, as well as one ultimate perk, which can add slight variations to each game from being able to carry extra items to being able to count as two votes in a 1v1 scenario. Lastly, games reward booth tokens which can be used to purchase cosmetics. You can customize each of the characters and terrors, and some even add a level of confusion for newer players. Or, um, they can be whatever this is. 
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it helped clear up any of the game mechanics for you. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer them. So this is actually my first YouTube video and I'll be trying to make more to seed videos like this. So like and subscribe if you'd like to see me make more. Thank you.